So, how do we do this? Uh, <laughs> they never make these things easy, do they? So you need quite a big table or a second person to help you. And here's the machine. Really does need a second person to help you with these. Right, there we go. It seems like it's a very basic machine. We've still got the piece of paper in there to protect the needle. Here's the cover for it. It's been folded up. Um, probably need to press if I'm going to use it. And usually, I can't see any of the accessories, so usually they're hiding in the extension box on the R. There we go. Right, so things that give it away with it being a basic machine are this dial here showing you the very limited number of stitches that you've got and you've got the stitch length and the um, special stitches there and the normal stitches are shown there so you've got a to g on there and then you've got a to g here on the special stitch so when you select special stitch let's go all the way there so when you've got that selected make sure you hear the click and you've got all the different stitches there so you have a triple strength stitch on the middle of the needle on the side you've got a triple stitch zigzag that will help you reinforce the zigzag stitch on stronger fabrics heavier fabrics a herringbone stitch now that herringbone stitch is great for um, stretch fabrics you have a hem for stretch fabrics, blind hems there for stretch fabrics and an overlocking type blanket stitch for edges. So um, the normal organ needles that you get with Janome machines, your seam ripper, a darning plate. So you can do free motion embroidery with this, which would be great. So you just place that under your foot and you will have um, no feed dogs to interfere with your free motion. I've got some extra bobbins there. So I've got three there. Use only the bobbins that come with your machine. Don't start um, using different ones unless you know they are specifically uh, designed for your machine. Um, Janome, I think, just do one, one size now on the newer models. Your buttonhole foot. I don't really rate these buttonhole feet, to be honest, but they are good to make sure um, you get a nice straight line or if you're using cord to reinforce, which people don't generally do nowadays. It's more the type of people who would put cord in their buttonhole are the people who are more uh, professional and you'll find them, they'll, they'll have industrial machines, generally speaking. Now, the zip foot here looks a little bit peculiar, so... It's a one-sided, rather than the zip foot um, having the bar in the middle, it actually has it to the side. That, in a way, is good because it will help you with concealed zips as well. And then you've got your blind hem um, foot as well. But this blind hem foot will also help you with overcasting stitches as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to plug the machine in is make sure we put the connector of the cable into the machine correctly so make sure the machine is switched off now you will need to hold on to the side because they're quite firm some of these um plugs and that's good because you want them to stay this part this is the pedal that goes on the floor and your foot so your heel will sit on this side and you will press the machine like that so the harder you press the faster you will go so i always recommend good quality thread with my machine and i'm going to use gutterman and Gutsman have actually come out with this recycled th uh, threads that you can buy on my website. So I don't know. Let's. Uh, I tend to go for blues quite often. So let's do something blue. The first thing we're going to do when we fill up the bobbin is make sure we disengage the sewing machine so that the winder moves and not the needle up and down. So to do that on this machine, we'll pull the handle out. So grab hold of the hand wheel and give it a good tug and it clicks out. Just remember to push it back in when you're finished. So what we'll do is we'll grab one of our bobbins, but before I do that, what I'm going to do is open the extension cake box there and open the bobbin case. In here, I've got 
the bobbin race unit and actually I've got another bobbin sitting in there inside the case. So I'm going to drop that there for a moment and I'm going to lift up the spindle here. Place your spool of thread on there and we're going to follow this tension guide. Now it's a spring action inside there so we need to make sure we get the thread nicely underneath that spring. And then we bring the thread round and you can feel a tension on there when you pull that. Grab your bobbin and inside the bobbin you can see a couple of holes on the sides. What we want to do is go from the middle and out. So I'm going to go as if I'm going between the upper and bottom part of the bobbin and out through the hole at the top there. I'm going to grab that thread, place that on the bobbin winder. Push that to the side to the guide. Hold on to that thread, hold it up and then make sure your machine is switched on and you'll know that because the light comes on and then press the pedal. Now you don't want to be pressing your pedal up and down, up and down. You want a nice control and to have a good control on the machine means you will get a nice even feed on there. So you want to make sure you don't get sort of a cone shape. You want it nice and flat filling up. Let's go. If you don't want to fill the bobbin up fully, what you can do is just unscrew that a little bit, just unscrew it a tiny bit and move this guide round. So disengage your bobbin. So move it back to that way. And I'm going to cut the thread here. So when you've cut that, make sure you, when you lift your bobbin out, that you're ready to place it straight in to the case like that. And what we're going to do is put that into the machine. So this is your bobbin case. Now your bobbin case on these front loading machines is um, held easily um, by this little spring action here. Now, if I pull on that spring, you can see just inside there, there's like a claw that comes out. And what that does is it clings onto your bobbin so it doesn't fall out when you're placing it into the machine. So make sure you put your bobbin in the right way, like that. And then we're going to put that thread through this little slit here and then pull through this tension spring here to into that hole, like that. If I pull on that thread, I should see that thread going anti-clockwise. Make sure you put your hand wheel back and bring that hook to the highest point there. And that when we put this case into the machine, you might hear a click, you might not. Okay, and we have that. And we want to make sure that's up at the top. Like that. All right, so let's thread up the top thread. So we can take this thread off the tension spring for the bobbin now, and we can bring that thread round the first guide down the front of the machine, around where it tells us number two, up, and then we're going to bring the thread around, catch that hook, and towards you, bring it back down. And we need to make sure we get one of these two guides. Now you can see there's a guide on the right hand side and one on the left. Now it doesn't matter which guide you use. The reason there are two guides is because remember at the top, there are two spindles for two threads. You can actually put a twin needle in there and we'll show you that in another video, but you can use a twin needle and have threads coming from two different points to feed in the two different needles. But because we've only got one needle today, I'm going to just choose either of the hooks and bring the thread round and then pop that through the needle. There we go. And you usually want about 10 centimetres of thread. If there was a cutter there, I usually say cut your thread and that will be fine. And that looks about the amount of thread you would have. Now, hold on to that thread with your left hand. And we're going to turn the hand wheel a full rotation towards me. So that means the hook, see this hook here, that's got to go all the way down 
and all the way back up again so it's at the highest point and watch what will happen with this thread hold on tight to this top thread and there we go did you see that thread there hook up and that's my bottom thread has been caught by the top thread what the top thread did was it caught the thread from underneath and formed a stitch so now if we look up here my hooks all the way at the top now i want to show you something else so this machine uses snap on feet now you can use generally any janome foot and any generic foot and i don't think they've actually have a, a name a letter on this foot so it looks like it's a general generic foot that they've got in there anyway um you just place your next foot in there so you want to catch that bar there you see that bar so we want to place it under that hook there so you can see there's a hook just there place that bar under there just leave it to rest on the table of the machine but it balances over because it's a bit heavy because of the shape of the foot i'm just going to put my finger on it to keep it straight and then i'm going to put the press foot down and just wiggle it around with my other finger like that so it goes into place like that now it's a blind hem foot and the reason there's a screw on there is because you want a different width and you want to catch a different amount of fabric and it depends on how wide your zigzag is and um, because this doesn't alter the zigzag on this machine you don't really need a screw on the machine so quite often people like to make children's clothes or swimwear or dancewear you want to use a stitch that allows you to um, sew stretch fabric and still maintain your stretch so you can use any of these on this side so you need to make sure that your stitch length is on the stretch stitch or i call it uh, special stitches sometimes um, because not always um, use them for stretch stitch I do use these for um, hard wearing projects as well so um, calling them stretch stitches can be confusing stretch fabrics are already very difficult to feed so you want to make sure you get your fabric sitting on both sets of feed dogs throughout this process so always try and make, make sure that you can see a tiny bit of fabric Okay, you don't need to lock stitches because it's going back and forward and giving you three stitches per stitch. So you don't have a choice on the length of these stitches, but you do know it's a stretch stitch. So there you go. So you've got a stretch stitch sitting like that. And if I demonstrate using A, lock at the bottom now i'll show you two things that have happened there right first thing that i've noticed is the fabric has overlapped can you see that the fabric's overlapped because you didn't get a balance of the foot going back and forward to reset the fabric on each other so you end up with an overlap and the second thing that will happen is when i pull you can hear thread snap and you know they fall apart so if as soon as that swimming costume or dance costume gets any sort of pressure on it it will start pulling and popping stitches which will be quite embarrassing really won't they so use your stretch stitch 